Hi, my name is Greg Tim. You'll probably recognize me from leading the walking tours of Pescadero these many years. Tully hat in hand, walking you through the streets of Pescadero, talking about things that used to be and things that are. Answering pertinent questions like, where's the bread and where's the bathrooms? But today, we're going to do something different. Times are different today, and so we're going to put together a virtual walking tour using a lot of photographs, many of which you've never seen, and we'll show you a side of early Pescadero that maybe you didn't even imagine or only dreamed of. A lot of these were put together by myself and Ed Weeks to make them chronicalized, and that's a part of a bigger project, which I hope to release later. Uh, Ed is no longer with us, but in his spirit is in this presentation. So today, I'd like to lead you on a virtual history walking tour of Pescadero. Let's go. Now let's start off with this first photograph. This is the earliest photograph we have looking down over the town of Pescadero. It was done from the East Hills looking out toward the ocean. You can see the marsh back here and of course the familiar hills here. The photograph can be dated by looking at the various buildings and where they are. This is, we, I'm calling this the Ed Weeks Greg Tim School of how to date photographs in Pescadero. We know that the Congregational Church down here was built in 1868. We also know that the William Knapp House, which happens to be my home, was built in 1863, but there is an addition built in 1870, a back kitchen, which is not in a photo. So we can date this between 1868 and 1870. Also, the McCormick House, which was built in about 1868, late 1868, early 1869, is currently in the photograph. So this gives us our dates. The Gerritsen Building, which was a large mercantile and uh, Wells Fargo stage stop, among many other things, is standing at this point. Now, right here, the reason the photograph was probably taken and centered in it is the Braddock's Week home. Now, that that home right there is looking a lot different then than it is now because in the you know Victorian era, a couple of Victorians were built in Pescadero and several in Half Moon Bay. The Chandlers built a home, two-story Victorian home, and it probably influenced a lot of the folks around with their fairly simple salt box homes. So this home, as you'll see it now, has a front porch, has filigrees, has much more decoration added. So that did influence the dating and later historians incorrectly d dated it as a much later home. But it was built in the late 1850s or very early 1860s. Just as the other week's home, the brother, BV, was also modernized with, I call them Victorian goo Now, as we go around and look at Pescadero, one of the big changes and people, it's within memory of people alive now, the Pescadero Creek Road was moved over. Much disruption. It just, everything had to be changed and moved. And the Weeks home had to be cut in half. Buildings moved out here. And, and the building moved. There was a, a Chandler home, not the Victorian, but a later home, Bungalow, had to be moved across the road. So a lot of disruption to the town for this uh, county improvement of Pescadero. But take a good look. This is a great early photograph. This wonderful photograph was taken in 1892 atop Lincoln Hill, looking down into the village, and let's use it to take in a virtual quick walking tour through Pescadero at that time. Flying on down the hill, we're going to see the first of the old still-standing buildings, and this is a lilac-colored home now with beautiful gardens. Across the way is the Methodist Episcopal Parsonage at the time, now a private home, been raised up for flooding. Next is another home, uh, been remodeled a couple times, and beautiful house now with hip roof. Up here is the Knapp home, built in 1863, middle of the Civil War. Uh, notice the water tower with the windmill on top, and then the barn, which is no longer standing. And the windmill is now gone, too. 
uh, but that house is still standing and occupied. The IOF hall, which is a home and a boarding, it had an addition done shortly after this photo was done, which still, it still looks like very 1890s period. The little building here is gone, replaced by other buildings, and then the brand new uh, Methodist Episcopal Church, steeple and all right here, all eight families as members. Next is Ma Fry's home. Then there's the area that's now the post office with the uh, bar and grill, uh, the Cummins house, and then we see the Garrison Levy Brothers store. Across for the Duarts parking lot is the, uh, it's actually a, a store by Dr. Goodspeed. And then we're kind of blocked, and we'll cover this in another photograph. Going down to the end, though, is the Congregational Church with its spire, recently built, because once the Methodist Episcopal Church started its spire, the other churches quickly decided to build theirs, which they put off due to economics when they first built in the 1860s. Here's the cemetery up here with a water tower in the center. Then we go down here and we see McCormick Home with this beautiful water tower. Then we see the Goulson Blacksmith Shop, the Goulson Home. And looking back in here, we can see various details uh, on North Street, various buildings that are standing or not. The water tower right here is a three-story Weeks water tower, and it was finally pulled down when Mrs. Weeks got very worried that young Eddie was running around on it and he was going to fall off of it when it fell down. Uh, back up here is the, church, the uh, school, but then down here, one of the more important things is under these trees is a little building, and it is actually the adobe that Juan Jose Gonzalez built when he moved up to Pescadero in 1852. It was the second of the adobes Juan Jose built, but this was when he moved up here permanently. Going down over here is the barn. You see it on various lithographs and pictures. And to the far right is the water tower and the Braddock Weeks home. So as we just go back and see the whole town, a great photo, what Pescadero was like in 1892. Now this is the Levy Brothers building. This is shot is taken where the parking lot across from the Taqueria is. And this stood there and it was a succession of owners. It was built by Marston Cummings, Garrison Stryker had a store, James McCormick gave it a run, and then the Levy Brothers were probably the most successful. Um, the stagecoach stop was there, uh, Telegraph was there, even the first uh, telephone was put there. Series of things, dental offices upstairs, um, and there was a big extension to this, a big warehouse building that was eventually used as a Union High School in the 20s. So very major part of Pescadero, part of that great intersection with the um, flag flying in the middle that was you know downtown Pescadero. Now the quality of this photo isn't that great, but if you want to see a great picture, the same photo, if you go to the Wells Fargo Museum in downtown San Francisco, this photo stretches across many feet of the upper part of that museum. So Pescadero has its place in the Wells Fargo history as one of their favorite stops. Now I'd like to show you this photograph of the Swanton House. The Swanton House was definitely the center of Pescadero. At first the Swanton started in really the late 1850s, but Mrs. Swanton was getting a reputation for cooking, and as folks were starting to come into Pescadero as tourists, the Crockers, the Spreckles, many families from San Francisco were coming down for the week. Mrs. Spreckles gained her reputation and turned it into a restaurant. The hotel was started at the same time, and then later on she started adding the little buildings down here for the week-long guests. Folks would come to hunt, fish, the women would go down to the Pebble Beach. So Pescadero was quite the spot, with the Swanton House being the center of attraction, and any time anyone wrote about Pescadero in the newspapers, which was pretty often, they would feature the Swanton House and uh, Mrs. Swanton's famous cooking. 
Uh, just as a note, the Swantons are the same Swantons who have the boardwalk down in Santa Cruz. So it's all tied in as people moved on. Note the stagecoach out front, the horse and buggy here, and the beautiful little central park with the flagpole and the tree right in the center. Uh, it was quite the time for Pescadero, and this was really the center of Pescadero. Now here's a photograph taken in 1925, looking north, to see the flagpole right in the center of the street, and showing downtown Pescadero. Now let's look and see what it looks like now. Now we're back to 1925, and over here is the Emporium, which is built on the corner of where the Duarts parking lot is. And as you go down the street, you'll see way down here is a Williamson store. This is the first Williamson store before it burned. Down here is a garage and shipping. Over here, of course, is a congregational church. Um, you see, the streets are basically laid out the same way. And then, of course, here's the, the wonderful Swanton House, which is, by this time, had been had a remodel, has the mansard roof. It's probably it's one of its finer, finer photos of its detail and things. Now, let's take a closer look at uh, some of the businesses in that row of buildings I showed you in the last photograph. This is on the right-hand side, looking north in downtown Pescadero, probably about the same time, 1925-ish. I note the telephone pole and uh, things like that, which help date it. Ocean Shore Market in Pescadero, not Half Moon Bay, White Palace Restaurant, and just looking down to the other buildings. Shows a real great old Wild West sort of feel to it, even in the 1900s. Note the barber pole right there. Now moving further north in the same row of buildings on Stage Road is the Williamson store. Just a beautiful store sold, a little bit of everything, general mercantile, and you can see this photo of everybody standing in front of it. This unfortunately burned um, and was the first of four Williamson stores. Now I'd like to show you this view looking north in Pescadero and showing a, a livery stable on the left and the Congregational Church and all of its beauty to the right. You can see the trestle bridge uh, before we did the newer lower bridge uh, later on. But what's important about this is the horse and buggy era and having the downtown filled pretty much with livery stables and uh, hay, various horse-related business. One of the stories uh, Mr. Clifford Moore of the Moore family used to say when he was with me on the walking tours was how in the 1920s, uh, before the big fire downtown, the business was all aimed at horses. I mean, logically it would be. And the hay and the boarding and uh, all of those businesses. But when there was the fire, the town just changed because it was now the automotive era. Gas pumps popped up in front of the new stores that were built and buildings were just basically converted over from horse to um, automobile. And so that was one of the starts as we were looking at this photograph and seeing the era just before automotive took over and the big fire hit Pescadero. Later, Ed and I were looking at starting a photograph collection of the later times of Pescadero, 1920s, 30s, 40s, as the gas era took hold. And one of the things we looked at, I had some photographs from the Sarabias who had the last garage and towing service in town. And here was this photo of the white front garage, you know, gas pumps, 1930s cars, didn't think much of it. And then suddenly as we were looking at that old photo of the livery barn, realized it was the same building, just converted over and modernized for the automotive world. So really there's the story of change uh, all entailed in these two photographs. Well, hello again. This is the part of the tour where I've already gotten 
through the tour, walked back home, changed clothes, and then started thinking about all the things we didn't get to talk about. We didn't get to talk about the early years, the native tribes, the Spanish coming, and then the California era where Juan Jose Gonzalez was the first land grant holder, ran cattle here. A lot of things we didn't get to talk about, but we did focus on the era of Pescadero developing into a real town from about the mid 1860s up through the 1890s. Pescadero was definitely at its heyday before the cars really started taking folks over and skipping by us when the roads still ran right through Pescadero. Things were really uh, hopping around here. So I hope you enjoyed this tour. Uh, interesting format. We may do more uh, on different subjects of Pescadero if this works out. And then someday soon, hopefully, we'll be able to take another history walk through Pescadero. Until then, take care of yourselves. Be safe. Greg Tim.